Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In this session, we're going to work with MODIS NDVI data at 250 meter pixels. And we'll work with three tiles that cover most of Alaska. So the tiles are H10V2, H11V2, and H12V2. And we'll use the product from the composite period uh, starting at day of year 161. So the first step will be if you go to this folder, MODIS VI tile 250 meters, let's add tile H10V2, the NDVI. So we're going to add that NDVI. And then no, don't build pyramids for now. And then we'll rename this to tile NDVI H10V2. And then we'll repeat the process. We'll add the reliability band for this same tile. So that's our last band, which is subset data 11, pixel reliability modus. And then no, don't build. And then we'll also rename this layer to QC H10V2. Okay, and then repeat the process. So we'll do the same thing for the tile for H11V2 and H12V2. Okay, so we have our three tiles. So here is the NDVI for H10V2 and then H11V2 and then H12V2. And then we also have the reliability for each of those data sets. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll composite our NDVI tiles into one mosaic as a GeoTIFF. And then we'll composite our reliability layers into one mosaic as a GeoTIFF. So before we use the mosaic to new raster tool, we need to know what is the pixel type for our raster. So in this case, we've got a 16-bit sign integer for our NDVI rasters. So we have to remember that 16-bit signed integer. So here's our geoprocessing tool, mosaic to new raster. And by far the most common mistake I see is the default is 8-bit unsigned. So we have to change that to 16-bit sign raster so it will match our NDVI. So then we could hold the shift key down and select three layers of the three NDVI raster tile uh, layers and then just drag those three layers into our input box. And then the output location is a folder or a geodatabase. So I'll go to a folder and add that folder Let's jump up one so we'll add this folder so that will be the output location and then the raster data set we'll call NDVI okay and the last thing we'll do is how many bands so in this case there's just one band which is the NDVI value for each input raster okay and then just okay to create our mosaic raster so the result is a seamless mosaic that we created from those three tiles so we can remove our original three tiles. And then we'll repeat the process with our reliability raster and then once again we need to know what is the pixel type of our input raster. So this time it'll be unsigned 8-bit integer. Okay, so we're going to take our three tiles that have the pixel reliability for NDVI output that to this folder, name the raster QC mosaic period 161.tiff. It's 8-bit unsigned, and we've got one band. So that one band is the pixel reliability information for each tile. And then just OK. And the result is our QC mosaic with values ranging from 0 to 3. Okay, and just like before, now what we want to do is use the pixel reliability value of 0 and the NDVI value greater than 2000 and create an output raster that will have NDVI values where the reliability was 0, so clear sky conditions. The NDVI is greater than 2000, so it's a vegetated pixel, and then give us the actual NDVI value for those pixels. 
So just like before, we'll use the raster calculator to accomplish that task. So just like before, we've got our pixel reliability equals zero. That will return a one for that question. NDVI greater than 2000, that will return a one for that question if it's true, times the actual pixel NDVI value. And we'll output that to a new raster called good NDVI 250 meter because that's the pixel size for the period 161.tiff and then just OK. And we can use the identify tool to check our results. So here's an example for this pixel. The NDVI was less than 2000. The reliability was not zero. So it returns a good NDVI value of zero. And for this pixel, the NDVI was 8221. The pixel reliability was zero, so the output has a pixel value of 8221 for that pixel. Okay, so just like before, what we'll do now is turn all those pixels that have a value of zero to no data. So we can use the set null tool to do that. So the question is, is a pixel value equal to zero? And if that's true, it gets set to null or no data. If it's false, we just keep the original good NDVI value. And then we'll output that to a new raster called good NDVI 250 meters period 161 no data and then just OK. So now we've got a raster with NDVI values from 2001 to 99925. It's still in the sinusoidal projection. So now what we'll do is we'll use the project raster tool to project it from the sinusoidal projection into the Alaska Albers projection. Okay, so I'll output it to a raster called Good NDVI 250 meter period 161 AK Albers NAD83. So our output coordinate system will be in the continental folder projected coordinate system, continental North America Alaska Albers. So that's the Alaska Albers coordinate system NAD 1983. And then our cell size will be 250 meters, so 250 meter pixel size, and then the resampling method will be nearest neighbor, and then just OK. OK, so our data frame coordinate system is in the first raster, which in this case was a sinusoidal projection. So let's just make a new data frame, and we'll call that Alaska Albers data frame. And then we'll take our NDVI that's in the Alaska Albers coordinate system, copy and paste it into our new data frame. So now you can see that we're in the Alaska Albers coordinate system. So then I remove my original data frame. Okay, so what you need to do now is add the eco region polygons into this Alaska Albers data frame. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll use the zonal statistics as table tool to ask about the average NDVI within these ecoregion polygons. So for every different eco name, go to the pixels that are valid NDVI pixels within those polygons and output a table, give us the mean NDVI value. So for example, the Arctic coastal tundra is an eco name for so for all the polygons that are Arctic coastal tundra we want to know what is the average NDVI value for this composite period okay so if you go to the blackboard website I've got some quiz questions for you considering this exercise